There is a lot of emerging interest in the area of database technology. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the history of databases and then talk about kind of the current state of affairs in database technology. So going way back in time, uh, the database was the filing cabinet with um, paper files with indexes on those files. And that, as computers started to come into the forefront of business systems, became a, a batch of cards. And, and a card reader would be the, the access method, if you like, to the data. Um, once we started to get hard disks and floppy disks, there was a file system that the computer would read. And then finally, um, the first databases started to come into um, use, namely initially hierarchical databases like IMSDB, followed by network databases. IDMS is a good example of, of a network database. And then um, relational technology started to come to the forefront beginning in 1979 with Larry Ellison's Oracle. And soon thereafter, IBM's work with uh, um, Ted Codd and Chris Date um, releasing SQLDS and DB2. And it was relational technology that really sort of brought forward the ease of use for both developers and users in production um, uh, in terms of analyzing and reporting and looking at data as well as keeping the data in a very well-structured format. And, and structured query language, or SQL, is, is, is a very easy to use language to define databases and also access them. So that's sort of a very brief history of how relational databases came into being. Um, there's, there's one person we really should mention. His name is Michael Stonebreaker. He was one of the more innovative, uh, successful database technology um, pioneers. And he created a series of, of modern types of databases, starting with Ingress, which is a relational database now known as Postgres. But then following up with Illustra, where the first data blade and object relational technology came in. And then um, with Cohera, which is sort of moving queries to the edge and having distributed databases. And Streambase, which is sort of a real-time uh, data feed analytics database uh, used mostly in financial systems like stock market applications. And then more recently with some of the non-SQL databases and analytics databases like Vertica, uh, Vault DB would be a good example in Paradigm 4. So Michael Stonebreaker is a huge pioneer in this area. We can't forget Sybase in database history, um, another um, Bay Area uh, database company that got very wide adoption in the financial services industry because of its performance and its resilience in terms of its replication. So that sort of yielded a break point, if you like, in the history and, and more recently what has happened is open source databases have started to be adopted by enterprises. The enterprises initially really resisted using open source technology because of the security, compliance, and governance issues associated with open source technology in that the source code wasn't always under full control and there might be issues in terms of um, unauthorized people accessing data. But really the pressure that's been driven by the development and production community around MySQL um, and Hadoop and um, other open source databases like MongoDB has really almost forced enterprises into taking some of these databases into production operation, both inside their data center and in the cloud. Well, the problem is that all of these um, databases don't have the type of resilience that was built in by the proprietary database vendors like Oracle and Sybase and, and, and IBM. And that is the current gap in open source database technology, which is the ability to um, fail over, the ability, the ability to replicate, to create multi-master databases in, in multiple locations, and to make sure that all the updates happen in a guaranteed, um, guaranteed uh, uh, time frame. And, and, um, and I, and I, and I think what, what the challenge is today, and there are quite a few startup companies focused on this right now, is to make these open source databases resilient enough for enterprises to take them into production operation. And I think that's, that's possibly the, um, the beginnings of, of what's, what, what it's going to take to allow enterprises to take these open source databases to the cloud, where um, you'll see things called database as a service. Amazon has released the first database as a service that's really um, received wide adoption recognition. It's called RDS. What we're seeing in, in certain young companies, Continuant is a good example of this, 
is where they are bringing tools that bring resilience into open source databases and allow them to interact and replicate with the legacy resilient enterprise databases like Oracle, Sybase, and uh, DB2 and others, where you can take production transaction data from um, transaction systems and get them into analytic systems um, for near real-time analysis and still pass the requirements of the governance, compliance, and security people.